रूटीन लोकेशन हैज़ एनर्जी टाइम हैज़ मेमोरी एवरी डे थिंक एज यू वेक अप टूडे आई एम फॉर्चुनेट टू बी अ लाइफ आई हैव अ प्रीशियस ह्यूमन लाइफ आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू वेस्ट इट दी दलाई लामा देर आर ट्वेल्व अफर्स मे बी मोर स्लीपिंग ऑन द फ्लोर ईच ऑन अ थिन योगा टाइप पैड कवर्ड बाय अ सिंपल शीट द वॉल्स ऑफ द रूम आर मेड ऑफ पैक्ड काव डंग डेट फील्स लाइक रफ प्लास्टर एंड गिव्स द प्लेस आर नॉट अनप्लीसेंट और द स्मेल द अनफिनिश्ड स्टोन फ्लोर आर वॉन स्मूथ बट अ फार क्राय फ्रॉम मेमोरी फॉर्म देर आर नो फिनिश्ड विंडोज इन दिस बिल्डिंग वी आर इन एन इंटीरियर रूम डेट कीप्स अस ट्राई इन द रेनी सीजन एंड हैज प्लेंटी ऑफ डोर्स फॉर वेंटिलेशन ऑल दो आई स्लीप हियर एवरी नाइट देर इज नो पर्टिकुलर स्पेस डैट आई कंसिडर माइन वी स्टेर क्लियर ऑफ ओनरशिप हियर नो पोजेशंस नो मटेरियल अटैचमेंट्स राइट नाउ द रूम इज डार्क एज अ केव बट फ्रॉम द टैनर ऑफ द बर्ड्स आउटसाइड आर बॉडीज नो डैट इट्स फोर ए एम टाइम टू वेक अप वी आर ड्यू एट कलेक्टिव प्रेयर्स इन हाफ एन आवर विदाउट स्पीकिंग अ वर्ड वी मूव टू द लॉकर रूम सम ऑफ अर्स शावरिंग सम ऑफ अर्स पुलिंग ऑन आर रूप्स We wait in line to brush our teeth at one of the four communal sinks. No one from the outside world is witness to our activity, but if they were, they would see a group of seemingly well-rested men, all of whom appear perfectly content to be getting up at this early hour. It was not always that easy. Every morning, my brain does pray to remain shut down. just a little bit longer thought of a different excuse for my i should sleep in but i pushed myself to adopt this new routine because i was committed to the process the fact that it was hard was an important part of the journey eventually i learned the one infallible trick to successfully getting up earlier i had to go to sleep earlier that was it I had spent my entire life pushing the limits of each day sacrificing tomorrow because I did not want to miss out on today but once I I finally let that go and started going to sleep earlier waking up at 4 become easier and easier and as it become easier I would that I could do it without the help of anyone or anything besides my own body and the natural world around it this was a revelatory experience for me i realized i had never in my life begin my day without being startled in one way to another when i was a teenager my morning summons came in the form of my mother screaming ja wake up from downstairs in later years an alarm clock performed the same thankless task every day of my life had begun with a sudden jarring instruction now however i was waking up to the sound of birds trees rustling in the wind a stream of water i woke to the sounds of nature at least i came to understand the value in it the point of waking up early was not to torture us it was to start the day off with peace and tranquility birds are gong the sound of flowing water and our morning routine never varied the simplicity and structure of ashram morning spared us from the stressful complexity of decisions and variations starting our days so simply was like a mental shower it cleansed us of the challenges of the previous day giving us the space and energy to transform greed into generosity anger into compassion loss into love finally it gave us resolve a sense of purpose to carry out into the day in the ashram every detail of our life was designed to facilitate the habit or ritual we were trying to practice
for example our robes when we rose we never had to think about that what to wear like steve jobs barack obama and arena all of whom have been known to have their own basic uniforms monks simply their clothing so as not to waste energy and time on dressing up for the day we each had two sets of robes one to wear and one to wash in similar fashion the early morning wake up was designed to launch the day in the right spirit it was an ungodly hour yet it was spiritually enlightening i would never wake up that early you may be thinking i can't think of a worse way to start the day i understand that perspective since i used to feel the same way but let's take a look at how most people currently starting their day sleep researcher says 85% of us need an alarm clock to wake up for work when we wake up before our bodies are ready the hormone melatonin which helps us regulate sleep is usually still at work which is one of the reasons we group for the snooze button unfortunately a productivity driven society encourages us to live like this maria popova a writer who is best known as the curator of brain pickings rights we tend to wear our ability to get by on little sleep as some sort of badge of honor and validates our work ethic but what it is a profound failure of self respect and of priorities then once we have woken up after too little sleep nearly a quarter of us do something else that starts us out on the second wrong foot of the day we reach for our cell phones within one minute of waking up over half of us are checking messages within 10 minutes a majority of people go from out cold to processing mountains of information within minutes every morning there are only 6 cars that can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 2 seconds like most cars human are not built for that kind of sudden transition mentally or physically and the last thing you need to do when you are just woke up is to stumble straight into tragedy and pain courtesy of news headlines or friends venting about gridlock on their commute looking at your phone first thing in the morning is like inviting 100 chatty strangers into your bedroom before you have showered brushed your teeth fixed your hair between the alarm clock and the world inside your phone you are immediately overwhelmed with stress pressure anxiety do you really expect yourself to emerge from this state and have a pleasant productive day in the ashram we started each morning in the spite of the day we planned to have and we trained ourselves to sustain that deliberateness and focus all day long sure that's all fine and good if your daily schedule involves prayer meditation study service and cures but the outside world is more complex early to rise here is my first recommendation woke up one hour earlier than you do now no way you say why would i want to woke up any earlier than i do right now i don't get enough sleep as it is besides yuck but hear me out none of us wants to go to work tired and then get to the end of the day feeling like we could have done more the energy and mood of the morning carries through the day so making life more meaningful begins there we are used to waking up just before we have to get to work or to a class or to a workout or to shuttle children off to school we leave ourselves just enough time to shower eat breakfast pack up etc but having just enough time means not having enough time you run late you skip breakfast you leave the bed unmade 
you can't take this time you can't take time to enjoy your shower brush your teeth properly finish your breakfast or put everything away so you will return to a tidy home you can't do things with purpose and care if you have to speed through them when you start the morning with high pressure and high stress you are programming your body to operate in that mode for the rest of the day through conversations meetings appointments waking up early leads to a more productive day successful business people are already on to this apple ceo tim cook starts his day at 3:45 am richard branson is up at 5:45 michael obama rises at 4:30 but it's important to note that while lots of high impact people rise early there's also a movement among top executives to reclaim sleep amazon ceo jeff bezos makes it a priority to get 8 hours of sleep every night saying that less sleep might give you more time to produce but the quality will suffer so if you are going to rise early you need to turn it at an hour that allows you to get a full night rest life gets more complicated if you have kids or a night job so if these or another circumstances make the idea of waking up an hour early unfathomable don't despair start with manageable increments see the try this below and notice i, I did not name a specific time for you to get up i am not asking for 4 am the hour doesn't even have to be early the goal is to give you enough time to move with intention and do thing completely that spite will carry through the day create a time cushion at the beginning of the day or you will spend the rest of the day searching for it i guarantee you will never find the extra time in the middle of the day steal it from your morning sleep and give that sleep back to yourself at night see what changes try this ease into an earlier wake up this week wake up just 15 minutes earlier you will probably have to use an alarm but make it a gentle one use low lighting when you first wake up put on quiet music don't pick up your phone for at least those bonus 15 minutes give your brain this time to set a tone for the day ahead after one week of this roll your wake up time another 15 minutes now you have half an hour that is all yours how will you choose to spend it you might take a longer shower sip your tea go for a walk meditate spend a moment cleaning up after yourself before you step out the door at night turn off the tv and phone and get in bed whenever you feel the first twinge of fatigue found time once you have created a space in the morning it's your alone nobody else controls how you use it given how much of our time is controlled by our obligations job family etc this free time is one of the greatest gift we can give ourselves you might go about your ordinary routine but feel the space and leisure created by more time maybe you have time to make your own coffee instead of grabbing it and root you can have a conversation over breakfast read the paper or use your new found time to exercise if you have a meditation you can start the day with a gratitude visualization practice maybe as health experts are found of recommending you, you will park further from work to add a bit of a walk to your morning when you create this space you will realize it fills with what you lack most of all time for yourself by this a new morning routine every morning make some time for thankfulness express gratitude to someone some place or something every day 
This includes thinking it, writing it, and sharing it. Insight Gain insight through reading the paper or a book or listening to a podcast. Meditation Spend 15 minutes alone breathing, visualizing, or with sound. More about sound meditation at the end of part 3. Exercise We monks did yoga, but you can do some basic stretches or a workout. Thankfulness Inside meditation, exercise, time, a new way to put time into your morning. The evening routine At the ashram, I learned that the morning is defined by the evening. It's natural for us to treat each morning like a new beginning, but the truth is that our days circle on themselves. You don't set your alarm in the morning. You set it in the night before. It follows that if you want to wake up in the morning with intention, you need to start that monument by establishing a healthy, restful evening routine and so the attention we have given the mornings begin to expand and define the entire day. There is no way you have time to wake up one hour earlier. But how often do you switch on the TV settle on one show to another and end up watching until past midnight? You watch TV because you are unwinding. You are too tired to do anything else. But earlier sleep time can put you in a better mood. Human Growth Harmony HGH is kind of a big deal, but plays a key role in growth, cell repair, and metabolism, and without it, we might even die sooner. As much as 75% of the HGH in our bodies is released when we sleep. And research shows that our highest burst of HGH typically come between 10 p.m. and midnight. So, if you are awake during those hours, you are cheating yourself of HGH. If you have a job that goes past midnight or little kids who keep up you, feel free to ignore me. But waking up before the demands of your day begin should not be at the expense of good sleep. If you spend that 9 to midnight getting real rest, it would not be so hard to find those hours in the morning. In the ashram, we spent the evening studying and reading and went to sleep between 8 and 9. We slept in pitch darkness with no devices into the room. We slept in t-shirt and shorts, never in our robes which carried the energy of the waking day. Morning sets the tone of the day, but a well-planned evening prepares you for morning. In an interview on CNBC's Make It, Instagram Shark Tank star Kevin O. Larry said that before he goes to sleep, he writes down three things he wants to do the next morning before he talks to anyone besides his family. Take his cue and before you go to sleep, figure out the first things you want to achieve tomorrow. Knowing you are tackling first will simply your morning. You won't have to push or force your mind when it's just warming up. And bonus, those tasks won't keep you up. At night, if you have no, you are going to handle them. Next, find your version of a monk's robe, a uniform that you will put on in the morning. I have a bigger selection of clothes now, and to my wife's relief, none of them are orange robes, but I favor similar sets of clothes in different colors. The point is to remove challenges from the morning insufficient as they may seem. If you are spending your morning deciding what to eat, what to wear, and what tasks to tackle first. The accumulating choices complicate things unnecessarily. Christopher Sommer, a former U.S. national team gymnastics coach with 40 years experience, tells his athletes to limit the number of decisions that have to make 
because each decision is an opportunity to stray from their path. If you spend your morning making private decisions, you will have squandered that energy, settle into patterns and make decisions the night before, and will have a head start on the morning and will be better able to make focused decisions throughout the day. Finally, consider what your last thoughts are before going to sleep. They are, this screen is going blurry, I had better turn off my phone or I forget to wish my mother happy birthday. Don't program yourself to wake up with bad energy. Every night when I am falling asleep, I say to myself I am relaxed, energized and focused. I am calm, enthusiastic and productive. It has a yoga robot vibe when I put it on paper, but it works for me. I am programming my mind to wake up with energy and conviction. The emotion you fall asleep with at night is more likely the emotion you will wake up with the morning. A stone of the path. The goal of all these preparation is to bring intentionally to the entire day. The moment you leave your home, there will be more curveballs. Whatever your job may be, you are going to need the energy and focus you cultivated all morning. Monks don't just have morning routines and nightmare routines. We use routines of time and location every moment of the day. Sister John Christian, the Benedictine nun I have already mentioned says, People living in the cities and suburbs can make choices about the way they live, though most of them don't see that because they are conditioned to be. On the go, all the time imagine for a moment what America would look like. Imagine the degree of seniority we did have if the people had something comparable to the daily schedule of the cloistered life. It provides scheduled time for prayer, work and recreation. Routines root us. The two hours I spend meditating support the other 22 hours of my day just as the 22 hours influence my meditation. The relationship between the two is symbolic. Chew your rings and drink your food. Monk, training was not just about spotting the new. It was about doing familiar things with awareness. One afternoon, a senior monk told us, Today, we will have a silent lunch. Remember to chew your drink and drink your food. What does that mean? I asked. We don't take the time to consume our food properly. The monk said, when you drink your food, grind the solids into liquid. When you chew your drink, instead of gulping it down, take, take each sip as if it is a morsel to be savoured. Try this. Same old, same new. Look for something new in a routine that you already have. What can you spy on your commute that you have never seen before? Try starting a conversation with someone you see regularly but have not ever engaged. Do this with one new person every day and see how your life changes. If a monk can be mindful of a single sip of water, imagine how this carries through to the rest of daily life. How can you rediscover the everyday? When you exercise, can you see the route that you run or feel the rhythms of the gym definitely? Do you see the same woman walking her dog every day? Could you greet her with a nope? When you shop for food, can you take the time to choose the perfect apple or the most unusual one? Can you have a personal exchange with the cashiers? In your physical shape, how can you look at things freshly? These are articles all around our homes and our workspace that we have put out because they please us. Photos, knacks, art, objects. Look at your closely. Are these are 
true reflection of what brings you joy are there other favorites that deserve a turn in the spotlight and inject some novelty into your familiar surroundings add flower to a vase or rearrange your furniture to find new brightness and purpose in familiar possessions simply choosing a new pace for incoming mail can change it from clutter to part of an organized life we can awaken the familiarity of home by changing things up have music playing when your partner comes home if that's something you do not usually do or vice versa if you usually put on music or a podcast when you get home try silence instead bring a strange piece of fruit home from the store and put it in the middle of the dinner table introduce a topic of conversation to your dinner confessions or take turns reporting three surprising moments in the day switch the light bulb to a softer or cleaner light flip the mattress sleep on the wrong side of the bed appreciating the everyday doesn't even have to involve change so much as finding value in everyday activities in his book at home in the world the monk tichnatahana writes to my mind the idea that doing dishes is unpleasant can occur only when you are not doing them if i am incapable of washing dishes joyfully if i want to finish them quickly so i can go and have dessert or a cup of tea i will be equally incapable of enjoying my, my dessert or my tea when i finally have them each thought each action in the sunlight of awareness becomes scared in this light no boundary exists between the scared and the profane every moment of the day we have talked about taking an ordinary familiar moment and finding new ways to appreciate it to take the presence to another level we try to string these moments together so that we are not picking and choosing certain walks or dishwashing episodes to make special we are elevating our awareness of every moment at every moment we are all familiar with the idea of being in the moment it's not hard to see that if you are running a race you won't be able to go back and change how fast you run at mile 2 your only opportunity to succeed is in that moment whether you are at a work meeting or having dinner with friends the conversations you have the words you choose you won't ever have another opportunity just like that one in that moment you can't change the past and you are deciding the future so you might as well be where you are kalidas the great sanskrit writer of the 15th century wrote yesterday is but a dream tomorrow is only a vision but today well lived makes every yesterday a dream of happiness and every tomorrow a vision of hope we may all agree that living in the present makes sense but the truth is that we are only willing to have selective presence we are willing to present at certain times during a favorite show or a yoga class or even during the modern task we have chosen to elevate but we still want to be distracted when we choose to be distracted we spend time at work dreaming dreaming about going on a beach vacation but then on the beach long awaited drink in hand we are annoyed to find that we can't stop thinking about work monks learned that these two scenarios are connected a desired distraction at work bleeds into unwanted distraction on vacation distraction at lunch bleeds into the afternoon we are training our minds to be where we physically are not if you allow yourself to daydream you will always be distracted being present is the only way to live a truly rich and full life location has energy 
it's easier to see the value of being present throughout an ordinary day that easier to be truly present if you are understand and appreciate the benefits that routine has to offer routines are not just about actions they are also about the locations in which those actions take time there's a reason people study better in libraries and work better in office new york city imparts into hustle and bustle while la makes you feel laid back each environment from the biggest city of the smallest corner of a room has its own particular energy every locations give off a different feeling and your dharma thrives or falters in specific environments we are constantly experiencing a range of activities and environments but we don't pause to contemplate which ones most appeal to us do you thrive in busy environments or in solitude do you like the safety of cozy nooks or spacious libraries do you prefer to be surrounded by stimulating artwork and music or does uncluttered simplicity help you concentrate do you like to bounce ideas off other or to get feedback after completing a job do you prefer familiarity or a change of scenery having this self awareness serves your dharma it means that you have stepped into a job interview you have a better sense of how you will perform at your job and whether it's a good match it's mean that when you plan a date you can choose a space where you will be most comfortable when you imagine different careers within your skill set you know which ones are best suited to your sensibilities try this environmental awareness for every environment where you spend time this week ask yourself the following questions if possible ask them right after the experience then again at the end of the week what were the key features of the space quiet or loud big or small vibrant or plain in the center of an active space or removed close to other people or isolated how did i feel in this space productive relaxed distracted did the activity i was doing fit well with the place where i was doing it was i in the best mindset for what i set out to do if not is there another place where i am more comfortable accomplishing what i planned the more your personal spaces are devoted to single clear purpose the better they will serve you not just in the fulfillment of your dharma but in your mood and productivity just as the room where the monk slept was designed for nothing but sleep so every place in the ashram was devoted to a single activity we did not read or meditate where we slept we did not work in the refectory in the world outside an ashram to watch netflix and or eat in the or bathroom it is to confuse the energy of that space if you bring those energies to your bedroom it's become harder to sleep there even in the tinished apartment you can dedicate space to different activities each home should have a place to eat a place to sleep a shared space that helps you feel calm and a space that feels comforting when you are angry create spaces that bring you energy that matches your intention a bedroom should have few distractions calm color soft lighting ideally it should not contain your work space meanwhile a work space should be well lit uncluttered and functional with art that inspires you when you identity where you thrive focus on expanding those opportunities if you are drawn to the energy of a night club in your leisure time would you do better in a career that is equally vibrant you are a rock musician but you are thrive in quiet then maybe you should be composing music instead of performing 
if you have the perfect job working for home but you prefer the activity of an office look to move your work to a cafe or shared workspace the point is to be aware about where you thrive where you are at your best and to figure out how to spend the most time in that place of course we are all obligated to do activities we do not like in environments that are not ideal especially work and we have all experienced the negative energies that these activities generate with elevated awareness we understand what has made us impatient stressed or drained and develop guidelines for what living in our dharma in the right environment with the right energy would look like this should be the long term goal sound design your life your location and your senses speak to each other this is most obvious when we think about the sounds that we encounter each day in monk life the sound we hear relate directly to what we are doing we wake up to bird and winds we hear chanting as we walk into a meditation there is no painful noise but the modern world is getting louder planes hall overhead dogs bark grills wind we are subjected to uncontrollable noise all day we think we are ignoring the honk and calder of day life but all of it adds to our connective load the brain process sound even when we don't consciously hear it at home many of us retreat to silence so we live in the extremeness of silence and noise instead of turning out the noise in your life sound begin it start by picking the best alarm tone in the world begin the day with a song that makes you happy on your way to work listen to be beloved audiobook a favorite podcast or your go to playlist choose sounds that makes you feel happier and healthier the better to replicate the highly curated life in an ashram time has memory when we tailor our locations for a specific purpose we are better able to summon the right kind of energy and attention the same is true for time doing something at the same time every day helps us reminder to do it commit to it and do it with increasing skills and facility if you are accustomed to going to the gym every morning at the same time try going in the evening for a change and you will see what a challenge it is when we do something at the same time every day that time keeps that memory for us it holds the practice it saves the space when you want to incorporate a new habit into your routine like meditating or reading don't make it more difficult by trying to do it whenever you have a free moment slotted into the same time every day even better link the new practice to something that's already a habit a friend of mine wanted to incorporate daily yoga instead her schedule so she laid a mat right next to her bed she literally rolled out of bed and into her yoga practice mavering habits is a way of circumventing excuses location has energy time has memory if you do something at the same time every day it becomes easier and natural if you do something in the same space every day it becomes easier and natural single tasking time and location help us maximize the movement but there is one essential component to belong wholly present in that movement single tasking studies have found that only 2% of us can multitask effectively most of us are terrible at it especially when one of those tasks requires a lot of focus when we think we are multitasking what's usually happening is that we are shifting rapidly among several different things or serial tasking this fragmented attention actually erodes our ability to focus 
so doing just one thing at a time without distraction becomes harder researchers from stanford university took a group of students and divided them into two groups those who frequently switch among multiple streams of media checking email social media and headline news for instance and those who don't they put the group through a series of attention and memory tasks such as remembering sequences of letters and focusing on certain colored shapes while ignoring others and the media multitaskers constantly performed poorly they even did worse on a test of task switching ability to make single tasking easier for myself i have no tech zones and times my wife and i don't use tech in the bedroom or at the dining table and try not to between 8 pm and 9 pm i try to practice single tasking with mundane tasks in order to strengthen the habit i used to brush my teeth without thought they were white enough they looked great but then the dentist told me that i had damaged my gums now i spend 4 second on each tooth i count in my head 1 2 3 4 which gives me something to do i am still spending the same amount of time brushing my teeth but i am not doing it in a more effective way if i am think about business when i am brushing my teeth or in the shower it doesn't feel nourishing and energizing and i don't take care with my gums when you are brushing just brush when you are showering just shower we don't have to be focused like a laser beam on every task every time it's okay to listen to music while cleaning the bathroom or talk with your partner while eating together just as some instruments sound great together certain habits complement each other but single tasking as much as possible keeps your brain in the habit of focusing on one thing at a time and you should pick certain routines where you always single task like walking the dog using your phone one app at a time showering on folding the laundry in order to build the skill going all the way routine become easier if you have done something immersely if you want to bring a new skill into your life i recommend that you kick it off your single pointed focus for a short period of time if i play ping pong every day for an hour i am definitely going to be better at it if you want to start your daily meditation a week long meditation retreat will give you a strong base on which to build throughout this book i suggest many changes you can make to your life but if you try to change everything at the same time they will all become small equal priorities change happens with small steps and big priorities pick one thing to change make it your number one priority and see it through before you move on to the next monks try to do everything immersely our lunches were silent our meditation were long we did not do anything in just 5 minutes except for showering we were not showering immersely we had the luxury of time and we used it to single task for hour and end that same level of immersion is not possible in the modern world but the greater your investment the greater your return if something is important it deserves to be experienced deeply and everything is important we all procrastinate and get distracted even monks but if you give yourself more time then you can afford to be distracted and then refocus the in your morning routine having limited time means that you are one phone call or spilled coffee away from being late to work if you are frustrated with learning a new skills understanding a concept or assembling a piece of eka furniture your instinct will be pull away but go all in and you will accomplish more than you thought possible even the hamnies 
rather elegantly Aka's most difficult build. As it turns out, period of deep focus are also good for your brain. When we switch task compulsively, like the multitasker who showed poor memory and focus in the Stanford study, it erodes our ability to focus. We overstimulate the dopamine reward channel. That's also the addiction pathway. So we are compelled to stimulate it more and more to get the same feel-good hit, and that leads to more and more distraction. But ultimately, ironically, the feel-good of dopamine bumps us out. Too much dopamine can keep our bodies from making and processing serotonin, the contentment chemical. If you have ever spent the day jumping on and off calls. In and out of meetings, ordering this book from Amazon and checking that thread on Snapchat, you know that feeling of exhaustion you have at the end of it all. It's a dopamine hangover when we allow ourselves to have immersive experiences through meditation, focused period of work, painting, doing a crossword puzzle, weeding a garden, and many other forms of. contemplative single tasking we are not only more productive we actually feel better there are plenty of magazine articles and phone apps that encourage you to meditate for 5 minutes a day i am not against that but i am also not surprised if it does nothing for you in our culture it is common place to devote 5 to 10 minutes to one daily practice or another but the truth is you achieve very little in 5 minutes i have had more than one friend complain to me jay i have been meditating for 5 minutes a day for 7 months and it's not working imagine you were told you could spend 5 minutes a day for a whole month with someone you were attached to at the end of the month you had still barely know them you definitely you would not be in love there's a reason we want to talk to someone all night when we are falling in love maybe sometimes it even the another way around we fell in love because we talked to someone all night the ocean is full of treasures but if you swim on the surface you won't see them all If you start a meditation practice with the idea that you can instantly clear your mind, you will soon learn the immersions take time and practice. When I began to meditate, it took me a good 15 minutes to settle physically and another 15 minutes to settle down the mental chatter. I have been meditating for one or two hours a day for 13 years, and it still takes me 10 minutes to switch off my mind. I am not saying you have to meditate 2 hours a day or 13 years to get the benefit. That's not the point. I have confidence that any process can work if you do it immersively. After you break the barrier and commit yourself fully, you start experiencing the benefits. You lose track of time. The feeling of being fully engaged is often so rewarding that when It's time to stop. You want to return to the experience. I recommend using immersive experience as a kickoff on regular practice to my friend who was frustrated with his 5 minutes a day meditation practice. I said, I get it. Time is tough to find, but if you feel like you are not getting enough from it, try making an hour long class. Then return to your 10 minutes practice. You might find it you become more powerful if you want you could try a day long retreat i talked to him about falling in love how eventually you are not compelled to stay up all night anymore because you have gotten to know the person 5 minutes ago is a lot further when you are married i told him maybe you and meditation could use a romantic gateway the constant energy of location and memory of time help us to be present in the moment engaging deeply in tasks instead of getting distracted or frustrated build routines and train yourself as monks too 
to find a focus and achieve deep immersion. Once we quell an external distraction, we can address the most subtle and powerful distraction of all, the voices inside your heads.